Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the to the Gnome Show. I am your humble host, Josh. I should know this by now. Um, it is my job to troll through the abysses of YouTube, finding shiny tidbits of goodness for you and I to watch together. Um, tonight, <clears throat> I have a short film from Anomaly called The Horror of Mercury. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's jump into it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys are doing well today. Catch that, uh, Dr. Lawrence McKinney, the case of the four astronauts, 1985, that was a good year, yeah. His condition worsened so rapidly that we didn't even have time for a clinical interview. The only information possible to gather was through testimonials from family members. The presented symptoms corresponded to an internal infection that was difficult to explain. Thousands of parasites were consuming him, Ew. so we had no choice but to place them in a level 4 isolation chamber in the underground wing. The examination was quite challenging due to the extreme risk of contagion. So I assume all of these are parasites. Filthy, filthy parasites. It's uh, gross. 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 takes 224 days to orbit the sun. Little Mercury just 88. Mercury never strays more than 43 million miles from the sun and is perpetually scorched and irradiated. Pictures from Mariner 10, a space probe sent to Mercury in the early 70s, reveal barren and a world of extremes, temperature by day Whoops. That was weird. It was the 1960s, and the space race between the United States and the Soviet bloc was in full swing. With the successful moon landing in 1969, the results were evident. The technological superiority of the West had clearly triumphed over Eastern development. Thus, after years of intense research, humanity finally succeeded in sending one of its kind, not only into Earth's orbit, but directly onto the surface of another celestial body. Joy, excitement, and above all, the sweet taste of ideological triumph left American scientists, military personnel, and leaders thirsty for more. While 1969 had meant a definitive triumph, with the clearest demonstration. The space horizon seemed limitless. If the incipient technology of the time had achieved it on the moon, not much more would be needed to start visiting the space neighborhood. Thus was born the only project that, due to its more than fatal results, has no official record of missions carried out by NASA, Project Mercury 1. American ambitions seemed limitless, as reflected in the decision of NASA's then planning chief, Thomas Dublin, strongly supported by Pentagon's Foreign Affairs Secretary, Edward Mitchell Schmidt. Together, they proposed the idea of sending a manned spacecraft to orbit Mercury for as long as necessary to study it and extract the most information about obtaining new sources of energy. This was in the context of the foreseeable depletion of oil 
for a few decades, leading to future energy conflicts and, naturally, possible federal savings. Mercury was believed to have an enormous variety of compounds of great value on Earth. Due to the ancient theory of Ankenan Raozon regarding Mercury's past and its relationship with the sun's thermal effect which would have enhanced those compounds inside as if it were a fermentation. The Mercury mission involved a rapid help? adaptation and understanding of the lunar model of space travel with times that needed to be extended considerably as well as more intense physical preparation for the astronauts. Additionally, the suits had to be manufactured to be even more resistant to ultraviolet radiation, just like the spacecraft module. It would undoubtedly be a risky mission, but with the caveat that a descent to the planet was not necessary. The planning of the crew journey, beyond providing valuable information through direct observation of the tests, would be the, the definitive test and expression of American hegemony at levels never thought of since the development of the atomic bomb. Yeah, but uh, um, I just I have a question. Um, we have we have enough trouble keeping folks alive uh, going to the moon or in near Earth orbit or, you know, anywhere near heavenly bodies. How you doing, viewer? Nice to see you tonight. Um, I, d I just want to know, how are you supposed to keep crew members alive in orbit around Mercury? Seems a little, I don't know, hot and fiery and windy and deathy. Uh, you know, I don't know. I just, I just have a few questions how the crew is supposed to survive. Even with the spacesuits and the shielding on the, air, on the spacecraft, it just seems like doom is following. The four crew members of the mission received special training between 1970 and 1975 does not look like it with the goal of orbiting Mercury by the end of the decade. The, the technical advice of the scientific team also called on the best space engineers and astrophysicists from the Western Allied Bloc to carry out the definitive construction of the rocket and module Scientists from renowned universities in Japan, Germany, Denmark, France, and the United States focused all their efforts to come up with the best possible design, innovating in as many aspects as had yielded fruitful results in the moon landing. In 1979, on May 4th, the Mercury 1 mission took off from Cape Canaveral. The entire process, unlike the trip to the moon, was arranged with the utmost secrecy and discretion. In fact, the information was not made public until the date of this documentary in 1999. At that time, wow. NASA communicated through its spokesperson that it was merely testing prototypes for future lunar and orbital explorations. Shit. Cracked and battered. The craters testify to the sun's immense gravity. Space debris plummets inward. Nearby Mercury is in the line of fire. Right, like, and you want to, like, how are you supposed to orbit this thing? Like, it, it literally, it, it literally uh, almost nudges the sun when it goes by. You know, or at least it's like, you know, looks like it's fucking trying to dance with it. Mercury's surface is like the hidden side of our moon. Both have great circular basins. And Mercury isn't much bigger than the moon. Missing lots of motherfucking information. Shit got erased. With absolute Ooh. precision in the trajectory and speed of information reception, Look at that. the journey's cool. duration was established at 19 months, whereas planned the spacecraft experienced sudden accelerations caused by the gravitational effect of the sun. This energy was immensely useful in shortening the journey and taking advantage of space conditions. 
the astronauts' good condition was confirmed at all times, and there were no incidents that put their lives at risk. Through cameras placed throughout the module, as an innovation for the most visual records possible of the planet, images of Mercury were recorded in a total of 503. These were revealed and analyzed in 1982, Good year. once the astronauts returned to Earth. It was at this moment that the problems began. The analyzed uh -oh. photographs revealed unexpected images for a planet that was supposed to be entirely rocky and compact. Huge holes were found all around Mercury, some several miles in diameter, with a perfect appearance of being excavated by some kind of intelligence. Additionally, inside what the those fuck holes, is that? strange lights were observed, as well as limbs of biological what? entities that, judging by their appearance, must have been some living and conscious entity. That's fucking creepy. Oh, what the fuck? Those are legs! The only photograph taken from the surface of Mercury was one in which a small probe was launched to impact the planet, attempting to provide the most data and That's information That's super fucking pale for somebody that fucking uh, gets the best sun in the universe. Upon arrival on Earth, the crew managed to enter the atmosphere with a ship that, according to their own comments, suffered serious damage, apparently due to natural friction, so the planned return that had been stipulated ended with the ship in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, near the coasts of Panama. When the return ship was transported to the United States, it was noticed that it had not necessarily been affected by the friction of atmospheric entry, but it was in an external state of corrosion produced by some parasitic organism that had adhered to it. Oh, wow. A greater surprise came when they realized that the interior quickly began to fill with this rare black mucus. Initially, they thought it might be an unexpected reaction to some maritime microorganisms, but then they confirmed that this material had not been identified in any way in the Pacific Ocean. After noticing this, the medical and technical team at NASA decided to monitor the health of the astronauts, who reported no discomfort despite the strange black mucus eating away at the ship day after day. In interviews with the astronauts, they mentioned nothing of this. In fact, the journey was much better than stipulated for most of the way, with minimal inconveniences. But everything changed six months later, when from the ship, already completely engulfed in the still unknown substance, a curious life form began to emerge from the mucus, about 90 centimeters long, similar to the tentacles of some marine animal, but showing no particular interest other than traversing the interior of the ship. In that same period, the four astronauts urgently arrived at NASA's special unit, reporting a rapid blackening of their upper limbs. Oh, Upon shit. analysis, it was found to be the same uh -oh. material as the black mucus that had engulfed the ship. Unfortunately, the substance's rapid abrasion covered the men completely within three days, giving them no time to comment on their symptoms. They had already arrived unconscious at the health service and were put into a coma within a few hours. Woof. So that was the horror of Mercury. Holy crap, anomaly. That's some yeah. Um sound off in the comments. Let me know how uh if that creeped you out. Um it was pretty gnarly. Uh especially the astronauts like just they were already gone by the time they uh, they they were taken in. <coughs> <coughs> like, subscribe, and share. Uh, peace.
Be happy. Be happy, be safe, be healthy. I love you all. I'll see you in the next one, guys.